Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first rerun of Entrepreneurs International Network. Now, the reason I say rerun is because Entrepreneurs International Network has been around since February 2010, and it was founded by this random dude called me, Iman Agai. And uh, we started this as a network back in Vancouver, BC, and it was called Vancouver Business Network. And then back in 2014, we expanded it to Calgary, Edmonton, and Toronto. And uh, in 2020, we went entirely online after having chapters in about 60 cities. And of course, we had the COVID. And then ever since, we had uh, several versions of online. And then we had the uh, and then and then we had a couple of changes of organizers and we finally decided to shut down the groups for about a few months and now we are back again and uh, today is kind of our test run so I am very excited uh, for this because I have not hosted one of these for many many years because we had other organizers running them and as we're bringing them back and we're doing this test run I have my amazing friend Jay Fair brother who is uh, who is doing the uh, who is having the conversation with me about the masterminds in this uh, in this series? And we're going to have Jay back again in a few weeks uh, for another conversation with our other host uh, Robert Evans, who is my business partner as well. But uh, with that quick intro and knowing that this is. Uh, a great comeback in building the systems and testing everything and making sure the emails go out. Apparently, actually, our our, uh, our attendance emails haven't gone out and the thank you page didn't have correct information. Uh, so, but again, I am grateful, Jay. Thank you very much for uh, for being with us and, and doing this test run and being the guinea pig of the system. But Regardless of the systems behind, I know that we're going to have great valuable conversation, which all of this can be broken down into smaller sections for social media and education of entrepreneurs. How are you doing, Jay? Aman, I'm so happy to be here. You know, anytime I get a request that says Aman, a guy wants to interview you, it's like, oh, OK, clear the calendar. I'll make that work. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be able to talk with you. Amazing brother, amazing! I'm very excited, and I mean, I've known you for uh, for several years now, and I've seen um, the amazing work that you do around the mastermind groups and uh, and the results that your clients are getting, and and all the work and all the uh, all the uh, props that people give you. Actually, the best one that I've heard from people was uh, when uh, one of our um, one of our clients uh, that were both our my client and yours uh, came to one of my events and was telling me, Iman, I got to tell you th uh, one thing. The best event I've ever attended in the last few years has been Jay's event. And yes, that includes your events too. And <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a great compliment. And, <laughs> and, and, and that was like, that was my best, uh, best, best, best shout out that I've ever, uh, that I've ever heard uh, for you. So I'm... Um, Glad and excited to have you here, man. So before we get started talking about masterminds, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your history, um, and how you got here. Like, 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 why masterminds and why, uh, why working with people that can run masterminds? And tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks. So um, I've been a serial entrepreneur for thirty years, and I've only been doing masterminds for twenty five years. And that's because the first five years as an entrepreneur, I wasn't smart enough to get myself into a mastermind group and experience the, the power that masterminds can have. So my story was that I started my first business at 30 years old and pretty quickly grew it to a million dollars in revenue, but I got stuck there. I kind of plateaued at that million dollar mark. And that's when I came across an organization uh, back then called the Young Entrepreneurs Organization. And, and I got put into my very first entrepreneur mastermind. And that was 25 years ago. And, you know, I, I'm getting to an age where I can barely remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. But 
I remember vividly 25 years ago, walking out of that first mastermind meeting and saying, oh my God, I found my tribe. Like these were my people. They got me, they understood me, they were me. And I knew that after the first meeting. So we joined that mastermind just to grow our businesses and be better entrepreneurs. But what I didn't, what happened totally shocked me because in these mastermind meetings, after meeting together five, six months, in these meetings, I'm starting to watch grown men break down and cry as they start to open up and talk about their messed up marriages and their kid problems and how they have anxiety and depression that their business has overtaken their lives. And this wasn't what I signed up for, but I was all in because it, it was really my first experience as an adult with that level of human connection where people were really opening up and talking about their real problems, you know, not just the surface level stuff. So I was all in. I started joining every mastermind I could. And over the next several years, my business took off. So I grew that first business to 10, 10 million in revenue and I sold it in 2004. And life was good, very good, right? You sell, you, you've been there, you sell a business, that's, that's a great thing. Um, so over the next several years, I you know traveled, I bought three other businesses, I invested in a lot of different things. And if anyone has had a period, I know you have them on, in your life when everything seemed to be going along swimmingly and then something out of your control happens. In 2008, the world, what became the world financial crisis started. And over the next several years, I lost everything. So within a few year period, I quite literally went from being a multimillionaire living in a mansion to living in my friend's basement, broke, bankrupt, divorced, alone, humiliated and ashamed because for 15 years I had built this identity as this really successful serial entrepreneur. And there I was sitting in that basement, didn't even own a car. So my journey out of that basement took a long time. And the only reason that I made it through that period of time was masterminds. I, I There were two masterminds I stayed in during that really difficult time in my life including that first mastermind, which I ended up staying in for 17 years. But the people in that mastermind supported me in ways that went way beyond a basement that I could live in for five months and a car I could borrow for seven months. You know, they supported me in ways that I can't even articulate. And, and so in a very real sense, uh, masterminds helped me 10x my first business, but also saved my life during one of the most difficult periods of time. So that's why I do masterminds and that's why I'm passionate about it. Absolutely. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much, Jay, for sharing that. Now, we're going to talk a lot about masterminds, but let's first actually have a, like set a great definition of it because lots of times people are confusing masterminds with group programs or with other things. And, and, and like they use word mastermind a lot in different states. So, Let's actually get one uh, one definition of it so we know what we are talking about. So tell us a little bit about like what you mean by mastermind. Yeah, so um, Napoleon Hill is credited with coming up with the term 50 years ago. And his concept was pretty simple. You put one person with a brain in the room, or you have second person with a brain, and you create this third, this invisible, intangible force that he called the mastermind. And so if you imagine putting like eight to 14 brains in a room, the size of the invisible intangible force you create when you tap into their collective wisdom, their collective knowledge and their collective experience, right? So that's kind of what I call a true mastermind concept is that smaller group um, of, of people who stay together, maybe even for 17 years. And, um, and the reason I use the number eight to 14 is because one of the key principles in a real mastermind is that in every meeting, every person should participate and have a voice. And that's, and, it, and, and if you have 20 people in your program, 
that you need a four or six hour meeting for every person to really participate and feel like they have a voice. So that's kind of one of the ways that it, you distinguish it from like group coaching programs and um, in that in that sense of it being that collaboration and co-creation amongst the, the smaller, more intimate group of people. So in my case, with a lot of my clients, they create what I call a hybrid program, which is something in between that true, small, intimate mastermind and a group coaching program. And the difference there is in a group coaching program, it's still basically just a one to guru relationship. Like the guru shows up, teaches, trains, coaches, mentors, everybody else, you know, there's Q and A and that kind of thing, but pretty much it's, they're not building relationships with the other people in the program. And so that's one of the ways that I define how you get to a mastermind or that hybrid is as the program leader, you are deliberately, you're doing things to deliberately create relationships between the participants in the program, right? So that like, you know, many people have maybe gone through a course or a group coaching program. And at the end of it, you still haven't really met or, you know, you've met, maybe interacted with, but you don't really have any relationships built with the other participants that were going through the program with you. So what I encourage my clients to do is create programs that are more robust in terms of that building those interrelationships with each other. Okay. Um, and generally in these mastermind group programs, so they're the hybrid versions, uh, are you going to mix the meetings together or you're going to have like training separate from the from the mastermind meetings? Like tell us a little bit more about like how, how that would be aligned and work. Yeah. So one of my philosophies is there's no one way to create a mastermind or hybrid program. And what I try to do is help my clients figure out what are the right pieces of the puzzle to put together to create the program that takes advantage of your superpowers but more importantly, delivers the most transformation for clients, right? So um, I'll give you an example. Like I had a woman who was uh, who, who heard me talking about masterminds and she's like, oh, I love this idea. I want to create this small intimate group and I just want to facilitate. Like that's, you know, wh where I want to be at. And I said to her, you know, look, you've been an MBA professor for 30 years like teaching is baked into your DNA. So don't, you know, you're, you're going to set yourself up for failure. If you try to create this program and do nothing but facilitate, let's take advantage of your superpower. Let's include some training in the program um, and, you know, create a mixture. So to me, that's, it's, it's all sort of figuring out what what is kind of the percentage where you're going to be facilitating what's the percentage you're going to be coaching or mentoring what's the percentage that you're you know it's mostly around accountability and support and build your programs around that okay let's talk about the economics of a mastermind um like how does it work financially which part of the system it it makes sense, like who should even start a mastermind in terms of like, oh, I want to offer this program as a mastermind, like in what stage of the business do I need to be and how should I price it? How should I package it? Tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. So obviously, if you have been in business for a while, you figured you have an offer that's selling you have a pool of either prospects, an email list, or a pool of current past clients, it's going to be easier to create a mastermind. But I have clients that have created masterminds before they had any program to launch. And now these weren't high ticket masterminds. You know, these they, they weren't making huge sums of money doing it, but they created mastermind um, with, with when they were just starting out. Um, on the other end of that spectrum, uh, I know uh, a seven-figure coach who's, you know, had, had built an amazing business and their mentor said, it's time for you to create your mastermind. And they went out and, and did it. And because they're great marketers, 
they sold 30 people into like a $12,000 a year program. And then three months later, 10 of those people had left because this coach had never been in a mastermind, had never run a mastermind, and they were just running it like a group coaching program. So to to get try to get more specific around your question of the you know, and and you know I you're one of my mentors and I followed your model of create the course get a program that you know is selling you've identified who your avatar is and who your you know what your niche is and 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 create something that that people will uh, that is converting and then add the high ticket program to it right. so. The best positioning and why I call my uh, company Six Figure Masterminds is to try to create a mastermind that that w- in at that one program will create six figures plus in your business, right? So you see that anywhere from you know a program that might be five thousand a year, ten thousand a year, twenty thousand a year. I mean, as you know, there are masterminds out there that are hundred thousand dollars a year to belong to. Mm-hmm. So. It's really a great way to scale your business by creating a high ticket program. And as you've taught me, you you almost have to have some kind of a high ticket offer to really create a business that's more than just a hobby, right? To create a sustainable business. So, um, you know, to me, that's where it, it it's it's a great way to leverage your time, leverage your expertise, and then also work with clients that you hand select versus anyone who can just write a check. So to me, that's also a distinction between like group coaching and a mastermind. In your mastermind and in the way I run my masterminds, there's an application process, right? So that I get to screen and qualify and I choose the people that I want to work with versus just anyone who, you know, wants to come in and might not be a good fit. I always say, uh, as a mastermind leader, your job is protecting the community and allowing the best members to join the community that can bring value. And to bring value doesn't mean like they can teach. It means that they are the right match that they want to hold the space, keep it safe and allow other people to share and also can add uh, in different aspects of it. That's fantastic. Yeah. To me, like the pinnacle of where you can get as a mastermind leader, and, and this would be typically for the smaller smaller programs, is you get to a point where you're you're not even chasing clients anymore, where you just become the exclusive gatekeeper. And it's almost like, no, tell me why I should let you into my program. I don't need to sell you on it. Talk to me about the value that you can bring as a participant to the program. Yeah. Yeah. When the mastermind is established and and then everybody is talking about it, then they'll they'll change the dy- dynamic for sure, right? Yeah. Um. So uh, you actually said something interesting that I think would be very beneficial if we go deeper in that. Um, for our audience, um, you said that uh, uh, there are some people who have started their mastermind and uh, and they were just getting started. So their mastermind was the first thing and. And you said that they created these lower tier priced mastermind programs. So um, tell us a little bit about that. Like if a person wants to get started and just start with a mastermind as opposed to anything else. Um, I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna talk about the benefit of that before even I, I know you are the expert, but I also want I, to add a little bit here. I like that idea because um, when you're creating a course, you need to provide the content. But if you're starting a mastermind, you don't necessarily require to provide the content, but you need to provide the container. And the people can bring the content to it. You bring the context and container as the facilitator, and and, and, the, and, the, and the members bring the content, uh, which is phenomenal because it's like, okay, well, I'm bringing the container, I'm bringing the context to this mastermind, talk, <laughs> you know? So uh, tell us a little bit about um, about that because like that gets me actually excited even after running 
masterminds for years, but like that idea, uh, as you know, like I always created like higher end mastermind programs, not like a tell, tell us even in like if if a person is starting like as a as a as a beginner pro, like how much does it cost? Like like what price point would be a good price point and 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 tell us more. Tell us more about all of that. Well, I'll I'll give you the specific example, and actually, this is a person that that you know. So, um, the, one of my clients went out as they were a brand new coach, and they were going to all these networking meetings, meeting other, meeting other brand new coaches, and they, you know, as you do when you're starting out in networking meetings, are setting up all these one on one calls, and they would get together and talk about the frustration and how they haven't launched anything. And she came up with this concept of what if I started a little four month mastermind and pull some of these people together and we all we do is help each other launch our first program. So she created it four months. It was $500 per person to join and they all just got together to help each other launch and create their first programs. So as a brand new coach with no experience, no content, no course. She created fourteen thousand dollars in revenue uh, from just pulling together, you know, people who are in a similar situation and giving, like you said, just giving them a container to help each other. So, yeah, yeah, it, it's a brilliant concept. That's actually an interesting thing because I always talk about knowledge doesn't change people's lives. It's knowledge mixed with accountability and support. And so technically what she offered was accountability and support, uh, yeah. but but didn't bring in the knowledge. Uh, she was like, follow whomever you want to follow, but then what we're going to do here is that we're going to keep each other accountable and we give you support. If you have any questions, we answer you or help you with the mastermind power. Um, but you guys go and do it and uh, keep each other accountable. So it was more of an accountability mastermind. Um and yeah, and, and so content. Okay. yeah, and and to where that can get to the next level is when you recognize that every person has value and every person knows something different than the others in the group know. So even in that situation that we just described, like those people were out there like buying different programs, hiring different coaches, right? So some may have taken a course program, some may have taken a program on challenges. Some may have taken a program on lead magnets. So they have acquired more knowledge than they actually think. And when they get then together with a group of other people in a similar situation, it's like, yeah, I learned this in Amon's program. I learned this in such and so, so and so's program. I learned this and, you know, and they actually really start to, you know, collaborate and co-create. Absolutely. And then the power to that is also like when they are sitting in a mastermind, they can share resources with each other. And also, also uh, like so, there is a chance that one person is really good with writing copy. Another person is really good at, you know, uh, uh, technology and putting together the funnels and, and then they can, they can do lots of other types of support for one another, which as a facilitator, you, practically don't need to know any of those things. Yeah, that's right. So now here's the thing. Then immediately the brain of a person who's getting started is going to say, but Jay, why would they want to work with me as the mastermind facilitator than anybody else? So what would separate them? Like what's a way to say like my mastermind is different. My, my program is different than other program because there are like 500 other options out there so um is there any particular like a formula to find our competitive edge to our mastermind program so yeah there 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 is a process you want to go through which is around identifying what your superpower is and you know and then and when i work with people like we have worksheets that we go through in terms of you know what percentage do you want to do just that pure facilitation what percentage do you want to do the content and training or is the content and training a critical piece of the program you're building so the, one of the ways i express this is that People will initially join the mastermind because of you. 
because there's something about you that they believe, you know, they want to follow you. They, they want leadership from you. They want guidance or mentorship or coaching from you. So they join for you, but the re the way that they will stay in the mastermind for, you know, years, not months is by the relationships that they've built and the respect they build for the other people in the program. So it does, you know, come down to you. And that's why, like when you asked about the financial part of it, right? Like you have to be able to establish credibility and, and authority. And most importantly, in today's world, trust to get people to join a program for five, 10 or $20,000. But then, you know, keeping them in the program can can be a different thing. So they they do have to ha believe that they can get value from you, and and then obviously for what you provide in the program. Okay, okay, that actually gets my mind very excited. Knowing like you can literally start with just understanding the context around a mastermind and putting together a one pager of a mastermind just by uh, by by knowing how to structure one and then and then putting that content out and of course like I think if you want to go down that rabbit hole we're going to be there like for six weeks here uh, just talking about like how to structure one how to put together the package and everything and you have an event uh, uh, I think it's called the six figure mastermind bootcamp right which you have in your background yeah. where, um, where where you talk about all of those type of things so um we're going to talk about that in in a few seconds but um let's talk about uh, a model called fewer better longer mastermind model which i know that that's something that you actually focus on so tell us a little more about that model uh, what it is like what does it mean yeah so the idea is fewer clients better clients and longer term clients so we all, you know, if we could all make more money with fewer clients, right, that's easier. One of the statistics I like to always use is that if you have a $1,500 course or a $1,500 coaching package, you need 67 clients to reach six figures in revenue, right? And as you know, getting 67 clients requires traffic, a funnel, yeah, uh, it's it's a process, right? Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Whereas with a mastermind, if you can create a mastermind that might be ten thousand dollars per year, you can get to six figures with nine clients. So fewer clients that ten make more. more money, yeah, nine or ten. Mm -hmm. and fewer clients where you can make more money um, and still be leveraging your time, and then also working with better clients. Now, sometimes I get, you know, a little resistance when I say that, because people will say like, well, I already love my clients. I, my clients are better already. But if you've ever run courses or group coaching programs, and, and you have those people that show up and don't do the work, don't, you know, implement the strategy and get the results. I mean, to me, that's more frustrating than somebody who just doesn't buy from me, right? Because we're, we're most of us are here because we want to help people and change lives, not because we're trying to amass a fortune, right? And then, so when you get those people that don't do, get the results, and I've had them, you know, I have a, I have a course program and, uh, you know, I've had people that don't get results, even though they love the program, they'll give me a testimonial afterwards, but they didn't do all the work and get the result. And that's just frustrating to me. So right. to me, that's why I love the mastermind model, because you get to work with people on a more intimate basis. You get to work with them for longer periods. And the thing I mentioned earlier about you hand select the people you allow into the program. So if there's that type of person that you don't get along with or that, you know, you think they're not ready for your program or whatever your criteria are, you have the process that won't allow them into the program. And then the longer piece is, you know, keeping clients for three years, not three months. So instead of a six or eight week course or a three month group coaching program, you ask clients to commit for six or 12 months up front. 
But then if you create the container correctly and know how to run and maintain the, the program and continue to add value, you can keep those clients for years, maybe even 17 years like I stayed in the one mastermind. Right. right. Um, I know like, for example, in my case, I'm mastermind members who uh, like joined in 2012 and they stayed all the way on board, like till 20, uh, 20, one 2022 um but the key to that though was that um there was a difference in my pricing structure between first year and the second year and afterward so like people wanted and then interesting thing like we have people in our program right now that they keep staying a member even though they don't show up uh in uh in one of the programs actually you were part of that as well that we are like 85 members that they kept paying uh, but only like 25 of them were showing up. The other 60 would show up only once a year or maybe twice a year. Every time they had a question or they wanted to have a conversation, they would just show up. And they were saying like that, just knowing that we have that access once a year is worth the entire investment in that program. And I'm part of a mastermind right now that uh, we started first year 22,000. The second year was 18,000 and third year and afterward is 15K. And uh, and I still pay like every year for it because um, I know that I can just show up and ask one question uh, in a year. And the thing that they fix is worth like six figures for me. So knowing that I have that option, it just uh, is a reason that I keep staying in the program, even though I'm not proactively using it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's, to me, there's two critical pieces in creating a mastermind that lasts. One we've started to talk about, which is the container, right? You've got to know how to create the container um, so that people feel safe. They feel um, uh, respected. They, they feel that they provide, they add value and, um, and then, so that's the container is the one part of it that's key. The other is the right people in it. So it's very hard to get to those levels of trust and people opening up and being vulnerable when people feel like there are outliers in as part of the program, right? The more similarity people feel with each other, the more easily they'll get to the deeper conversations, the the vulnerable stuff, uh, and really open up. And to me, that's where the magic happens is when you create, you put the right people in it, you create the container. And then, you know, in some ways, uh, you kind of, you know, joked about this earlier, in some ways you sit back and facilitate and it's easy, you know, and, and <laughs> it's one of the reasons that I love it because I don't feel like, oh my God, I, I don't have content for today because um, I'm not a natural content creator, right? Like I love facilitating. I don't love creating content. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, um, one, is there any question that I should have asked you and I didn't? And you are like, Iman, please ask this one question. <laughs> so I, I think um, an, another question that I get a lot is around the facilitation piece. Um, that like people say, I haven't facilitated before. I don't, I'm not sure how to do that. And it there is a skill to it. Um, but it's a skill that can be learned. And um, it there isn't like natural born facilitators. It, it's it's a skill you can learn by understanding how to, you know, actively listen, understanding how to draw people into conversations, um, learn how to manage difficult conversations, because invariably, you know, there will be times or moments where there's a little bit of conflict or disagreement or that kind of thing. So the facilitation piece um, shouldn't worry someone because it's it's something that you can learn. And it's also something that um, you continue to improve on over time. Um, and that's, you know, for me, I love that facilitation piece because it's unpredictable. 
it's always a challenge. You never know what's going to happen in the meeting or what somebody's going to bring up or uh, where the conversation is going to go. And, and, you know, there's ways to direct conversations so that it doesn't go down a rabbit hole and you get lost in, in talking, you know, off your uh, sort of agenda. Um, so I love that fluidity and, um, uh, you know, if I could wake up every day, uh, in fact, yesterday I ran two mastermind meetings, uh, two of the three that I run. And, um, you know, to me, that's a great day because, uh, you know, I wake up, run two masterminds and I'm done. Oh, very awesome. 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 So, uh, tell us a little about your six figure masterminds bootcamp, uh, what it is and, and, and how can people access it? So it's a virtual uh, event, November 20 through 22. Mm -hmm. We're going to offer everyone here today a free ticket to attend that event. Um, and here's what we do. This event is perfect for someone who is at a point where they're like, "I okay, I, I heard you talk about a mastermind. I'm not sure what mastermind I might create. I'm not sure you know, what the content is, what the pricing is, how I deliver it. Um, and I'm not sure exactly who it's for. And in these three days, we dive into what kind of mastermind you're going to create that takes advantage of your superpowers and delivers the most results for your clients. Then we work on who are the right people to put into the mastermind. And we, uh, I share uh, my purple fish, uh, right fit client uh, concept which is getting people to recognize that when you're building an intimate high ticket uh, mastermind, your, your right fit client may be different than the client who is engaging with you in lower level programs or you know getting your lead magnet and that kind of thing. So we really get into who are the right people specifically for a mastermind versus any other type of program. So that's pretty much in day one, we, we really start to zero in on that. And then on day two, we talk about creating the container in terms of, you know, refining what kind of mastermind it is going to be, and then helping you to create a simple uh, funnel model to be able to get people from what I call no like and trust to no love and trust to move people enough that they're they're ready to join a, a higher end program and, and to commit to working with you for six months or 12 months. So that we kind of do on, on day two. On day three, we talk about, you know, creating exclusivity, uh, urgency. We talk about the whole application process and the qualification process. Uh, and we help you start with a plan of what what are the next steps you need to take in order to successfully launch a mastermind. So you walk in on day one with a very fuzzy concept of what you would create and who it's for. You walk out with not only a clear idea around that, but a specific plan to put in place to start the process to launch uh, your mastermind. Okay, amazing, amazing. And how can people get access to the uh, gift tickets? So we can put it in the chat, um, and I, I believe your your team has this information as well. Um, but uh, put the link in the chat. It's. Um, uh, I was the, actually looking at that, and I think we need to add a place to our form for the link because we don't have it. Perfect. So that link is in the chat box, and the code. So Becky, if you can copy that for the recording, that would be great as well. Yeah. And so what I'm going to also do is um, for anyone who comes from this EIN talk with you, I'm going to be doing a uh, workshop on November 1st that'll help prepare you for the boot camp. And so if you sign up for the boot camp, you will get information on that November 1st workshop so that you're not walking into the event cold and you're really prepared for what we're going to do at, at the event. And the last thing I'll say about the event is that it is it is very workshop style, because uh, I learned from one of the best with you running events. 
that it's not just me talking for three days, um, but we're actually going to do the work and you come out of it with a plan. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Jay, thank you very much for the amazing information, the great interview, the great conversation, and being the very first person <laughs> on the new round of rerun of Entrepreneurs International Network. And um, and I can't wait to um, continue seeing the success of your students, the work that you're doing, and, and hearing more amazing things of uh, as a result of your work in the world. And really also thank you very much for joining us, Paul. Really appreciate you for joining us and finding the link to here because I realized actually a couple of things as Jay was talking, I was looking at the back end of the system and I was like, oh, the thank you page never showed and this didn't go out and that. And so like, wow, okay, Paul, really appreciate you for finding all the way uh, finding us all the way here because that was a big maze and uh we appreciate you as well and becky thank you very much for all the all the, all the work in the back end and and uh and all the all the work that you're doing for uh for reviving entrepreneurs international network and everybody else who is watching the recording again thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you at another entrepreneurs international network uh, meeting which happens every Tuesday at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time or that is 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks and have a good day. Thanks so much.